Shalom, first and foremost, want to give all praises and all glory to the true and living power, which is Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Raka, Kwadash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai is the true name of His only begotten Son, and there is no God beside them. And I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who definitely rule well, who told us 100% truth. And honors your citations to the elect document doing these works in sincerity and in truth. So I want to um, get into this lesson entitled The Inevitable. All right, and the definition of inevitable means it's certain to happen and it's unavoidable. The similes inescapable, bound to happen, sure to happen. All right. Inexplorable, unpreventable, assured, certain, for sure, sure, fated, predestined, predetermined, preordained, ineluctable, necessary, compulsory, required, obligatory, mandatory, prescribed, ineludible. So a lot of key words to uh, further expound on the situation that we're in, man. All right. In the which that uh, prophecy will be fulfilled, man. Okay. And, and, and it is being fulfilled before our eyes and it will all come to pass completely. So I definitely want to jump back into some of those um, syn synonyms. But uh, real quick, let me um, search up a scripture real quick. <clears throat> yeah, man. Whew. All praises and glory to Yahweh by Hashem. Yahweh Shai, man. You know, for, for fulfilling prophecy, for giving us prophecy, you know, giving us a chance to repent, you know, get our act together, get our act right before... He sends you how shy. Okay. You know, shy makes his return, not meeting these devils as a man and standing up and fighting for the whole full alike. You know, praise and glory to you, Hashem, shy man, that we have the chance to repent and do the things that please him so that we can be accounted worthy of salvation, mm -hmm. as you shy himself said. This is Isaiah chapter 55 verse 11 it says so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void okay so the words that go out of the Lord's mouth is what prophecy and he puts it in what in the spirit of the prophets to speak it he puts it in the spirit of the scribes to write it down Okay, he put it in the spirit of King James to translate it. <sighs> All right, <laughs> he put it in the spirit of the so-called white man to give us the First Amendment. Right, the freedom of speech to be able to speak it. All right, he put it in their spirit to uh, uh, release us from hardcore slavery to be able to speak it. All right, what prophecy? The MO to the TB will come to pass. The Israelites will wake back up to who they are. We will get beamed up by what the world really call UFOs. We will return and unto the land. And now these Edomites are shaking in their boots, man. Before they used to try and scoff. <laughs> you really believe that? <laughs> but now they look and they see that we're that we're growing worldwide. They see that even their own. <laughs> Scripture people on. They shall make their tongues to fall upon themselves. You have even Edomites that are admitting that they're Edomites and that we're the Israelites. Numerous videos cross, cross the years, man. So when we get back, it says, It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in a thing where to I sent it. Alright. 
speaking upon prophecies. So therefore, these things are inevitable. Even the prophecy of Yahweh Shai saying, and remember all things are written aforetime for our learning, that no man is greater than his master. You know, if they came after Yahweh Shai and persecuted Yahweh Shai for, because they were wicked, because their deeds were evil, they're going to do the same to us. But, as in some of these synonyms, it says it's required, it's necessary. All right. And these things are necessary to what? Um, let's 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 get that scripture. You know, numerous scriptures. Uh, Matthew chapter twenty-five, verses thirty-one. Says, "When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him." Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And how is he going to come? And what the world inwardly call UFOs. All right. A precept to that. Revelation 1 and 7. It says all eyes shall see him. Because the UFO is going to be so huge. All right. It's going to cover the whole earth. And then they're going to have UFOs coming out of UFOs. Because that's the thousands of angels. This is why the scriptures say, um, I think that's Psalm 68. <clears throat> oh, praising Lord to Yahweh Hashem, man. Yep, it says the chariots of the Most High are 20,000, even thousands of angels. And chariots just means vehicles, man. All right, there was a commercial I seen that said that the Dodge Challenger, no, the Dodge Charger, Said it said the Dodge Charger is the chariot of all sedans. Okay, so it called they called the Dodge Charger a chariot. And what is a Dodge Charger? Nothing more than a vehicle. So the angels have vehicles. What are the vehicle? What do you think that the angels' vehicles are? Okay, what do you think that the angels' vehicles are? I think it's, um, yeah. Deuteronomy 33 and 26. There is none like unto the power of Jeshurun, who rideth upon the heaven in thy help, in his excellency on the sky. What's the excellency of those chariots? How they, how they materialize and dematerialize. How they can multiply. How they move at the speed of, the speed of sight. It about the speed of sound, they, man. Me ain't no term for how fast they move, man. They teleport, if anything. But it says they ride upon the heavens. So what vehicle is riding upon the heavens, man? Come on. I mean, come on. <clears throat> you know, just being uh, uh the, stam the stammering lips, man. Having fun with it. But anyway, it says. So you know, just going back. That's why this that's why this is a beautiful precept to it. You know, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, right in the chariots, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate the one from another, as a sheep divideth as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. All right, and this also is go, uh, uh, can go into the Israelites, man, the two thirds. Because remember, it says in, in in the same book of Matthew, if you um have a brother that doesn't you and we can search this up, if you have a brother that doesn't want to hear you, you grab two witnesses, two or three witnesses. If he don't want to hear you and two or three witnesses, you bring him to the church. If he doesn't want to hear the church. You look at him as a heathen man. You don't even look at him as an Israelite. You avoid him. And that's two thirds of our people. Who are actually siding. With our enemy. According to the scriptures. Who are actually siding with the people who. The Most High hates. Malachi. 
the first chapter. And it says that his indignation is forever. Okay, but our people are actually siding with them. So therefore, everyone that's picking a side, the Lord is going to separate sides. Going back to how this is necessary, man. Right? It's necessary. It's it's required. It's mandatory. Because it's going to show who's really for the Lord and who's not. All right. And if it's if it's mandatory, it means it's going to happen. It's the same definition. If it's required, it means it's going to happen. All right. <laughs> no if and or buts about it. If you require it to uh, uh, um, wear a hard hat, your ass going to got to wear it. For an example. So it has, it has to happen. So it says. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. All right. And as you can see, it keeps going back. It, it, it goes into it. But because of those on the left hand side, those two thirds. They didn't do anything for the Lord. But. Eventually, they're going to come back into the kingdom as newborn babes. So, <clears throat> so you know, that's the blessing of being an Israelite. But, you know, this inevitable is, is just that, man. It's, it, it's inevitable that all these things are going to come to pass and we can see it happening. Okay. Uh, before our eyes so it's it's only a matter of time you know and that's why we measure the time diligently within itself we see so many people waking up at the fastest rate of all time i'm pretty sure man you know starting with the apostle Elder great millstone who's seen this thing play out <clears throat> from the pretty much from the start <clears throat> all right so this is um Romans chapter 13, verse 11, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Okay, so that's why it's time to lock in, because we surely, surely, surely getting so close, right, to this place being finished, man. All right, the more and more people wake up, the quicker, man, we're going to get the hell out of here, man. Lord, let's edify with that. I'm going to say shalom.